Hello gamers, welcome to Game Warp. This is Kim and Elwood. Up next, our review of Renowned Explorers International Society. Renowned Explorers International Society sees you taking command of a hand group hand-picked group of unlikely explorers as you travel across the globe in search of legendary treasures while always trying to stay one step ahead of your rivals as you vie for prestige in the renowned explorers international society to become the world's most renowned explorer. It's a journey that takes you through lost temples, forgotten cities and the general untamed wilderness to find uh, magnificent treasures and to generally boost your ranking within the society. Along the way, you will be obviously asked to tackle various perils. You can also learn to try and negotiate with the locals and use history, science, um, as well as general brute force to carve your way through the wilderness and find the treasures that you seek. But this is a game which has many moving parts and one we will try and uh, simplify as best we can over the course of this mini so. But obviously, we're best off starting with our opening thoughts here. So, uh, Kim, what did you think of Renowned Explorers International Society? I think it's pretty charming um, in the sense that it is very complex in a way that it's, it's you know, a tactical turn base. Um, you, you have a lot of strategy, but at the same time, they remember to keep it very, like, lighthearted also because you can always choose those three ways and, you know, there's these, like, little uh, cute comical little moments as you fight. And I think that there there is a certain I think there's a certain like easiness to it. It's it's never you never will feel like it's too violent or you'll never feel like it's too maybe I don't know if it's it's uh, geared towards also a wider audience like maybe a younger audience as well. It's hard to say who the exact audience is. Certainly, this is a more light-hearted game uh, than. But to be expecting it, it plays almost like a card game or like a board game, especially when we look at the character designs. So it's very sort of like similar to what we would expect from like the Quirk uh, Classics range. The whole setup of the game starts with you obviously first of all selecting the captain of your team along with two how can we put this, uh, two followers. They vary from the four ranges so you can choose between science and scientist, scout, fighter and speaker. Each will have their own sort of advantages and disadvantages and again this is broken up further with the selection of characters available and all of them have come with like such colourful designs and personalities that you can really craft a party of three just based on your own personal taste and still have an effective unit. Uh, I mean, are you going to go with like the masked female wrestler for example as your fighter? Are you going to go with the Russian scientist who uses what can be best described as a cattle prod uh, to battle her foes? It's, there's many options available for you and it's a a game that you're probably going to find yourself going back to, going back through and trying different combinations to try and find what works best for you. At the same time, there is no right or wrong way to play this game. There's many different tactics, you can, as we said already at the start, that you can use brute force, you can try and charm your way through it, or you can just generally just intimidate people uh, to try and get, get the way you want. The, there is no sort of one set way to go for the game and there's always the option to change it up as you go uh, so you're not sort of stuck like many games would have you on just one particular path uh, there's a lot of flexibility in the approach you're choosing to take yeah I, I mean that's I think that's one of the really cool parts of it is that a lot of this fighting is really looking at someone's like your opponents or your rival or whoever you've encountered it depends on their emotion or you automatically can determine like certain characters will be able to determine whether the best way to act towards them is to be devious or friendly or you have certain characters which don't just like like you have animal characters like wolves or something you know you see them and you have to try and find a way to kind of either charm them or not get into a fight and you can see their stats to get an idea of like how to attack them best the game also gives you kind of like the best approach 
in a certain way where, you know, what approach will lead to possibly, you know, your characters being damaged the most. There is a lot to care for, I think. But I, I think that the fact that the game kind of gives you, kind of nudges you the right way. It just depends if you really want to do it or not. Except, like, I think that what maybe one of the one of the harder things is, like, the tutorial is a little bit um, heavy. Because if you went through the whole tutorial, it takes a really long time. I think I, I, think I spent about 15, 20, 15 minutes probably going through the tutorial. And it really gives you, like, a detail as in like oh what matches work as in like if you were to re if you were to remember say like matching friendly to devious or something this outcome would always occur or something like that and if you remember that this would be really easy but obviously this is a game of trial and error and you can fumble on your attacks and all these things and i think that all adds to the experience of the fact that you need to find a person and you need to meet an objective and be renowned within five missions. Yeah, it's uh, certainly a game that loves its tutorials, to say the least. There's like a real phone book of a tutorial section that goes with the game, and thankfully it does give you the option to skip it and sort of figure it out as you go. That being said, the game does provide a certain level of hand-holding throughout that, as Kim said, you can either choose to follow or ignore. Um, certainly the outcomes of missions, it will often give you the recommended option for for your outcome for, for each conquered area. Again, in battle, we also get given a little chart at the top, which works in a real rock, paper, scissors uh, style, where... Aggressive will be friendly. Friendly will be humiliation. Humiliation will be will be aggressive, and often you will find yourself having to switch switch around. So that if you're going with an aggressive stance and your opponent is using a generally friendly stance, they may suddenly choose to change to humiliation and then suddenly turn the whole battle on its head. So there is a certain amount of flexibility required with your strategy and a certain certain amount of thinking on the fly. Um, despite obviously the cartoonish graphics and real light-hearted nature, this is a game that will beat you down rather quickly if you go into it and start underestimating your opponent, certainly, as was certainly the case during our recent playtesting where it was a bit of a struggle to get past the second mission just because our strategy wasn't there. Um, also when you get into the actual mechanics of the game it becomes even more in depth as you can choose to specialize in science or you can buy various representatives in cities so that you can get more gold for encounters or you can get more prestige there's certain tweaks that you can put in into the game to obviously promote the areas that you wish to progress in um, and again when we obviously get into the actual adventure inside you have a supply counter which dictates the amount of moves that you can take so you're constantly keeping track of how many moves you can make to get to the objective because once that hits zero then it's get mission over and it makes you consider where your moves are because each point on the map will give you different objectives it will give you perhaps more science or it will give you more supplies or it'll give you an encounter uh, where you can obviously find more gold or there's bit or one of the other sort of stats there and it's certainly something that constantly keeps you tracking the same with the resolve which means that your characters can unfortunately only be knocked out a certain amount of times before they lose faith in the mission and abandon it which from playing like jrpgs and having this Perhaps sport nature of being able to revive fallen characters as many times as we had sort of revives for. It was kind of a bit of a kick in the teeth to find that, oh wait a minute, you can only have your characters knocked out three times before they abandon the mission. It felt a little frustrating, especially when there was no obvious way to add to the resolve and make them, you know, a little tougher. But, um, I mean, how did you find the whole stats side of it, Kim? Because, I mean, this is a game that does love its stats. Oh, there's, there is a lot of stats. That. Like, it, it is incredible in the sense that um, it, it's just really hard. Like, sometimes it's hard to track everything in the sense that, you know, just by just our just like the meter you were talking about on the top um, in the tutorial, they pointed out that there were four things that you can look at and you can watch the stats of same goes for our characters, same goes for our rivals. And 
in order sometimes it's just like i at least for myself i think that certain games like these ones um take a lot of patience and it really needs to be a certain mindset that you need to be in order to play it i'm one of those people who like i think a lot like my job is very you know men like it's it's a lot of brain work um outside of like my actual work so when i come home i don't usually like to play games that require too much of my brain so these games tend to be with the one of these games i avoid because it's so tactical and it's so strategic and it takes a lot of time and energy i love the challenge of it and the stats and stuff if you really grasp it i think it takes time to really like master the idea of how everything fits together obviously right now at this point i'm still in like my first first course of the game so i you know i'm i haven't played as much as you have in what i understand and it really is just that you know like it takes time to really master and move forward and still you know there there there's so much to look at you know like this game just starts off and you have to collect all these things you know you can collect gold status research insight and then it jumps into like when you have encounters you have three different sort of encounters and then your opponents will have two different attitudes and then you have a billion emotions and moods and you see all these emoticons at the bottom next to your characters and there's just so much to grasp you know on your that one screen you know it's quite challenging and and you know really intimidating for someone just walking into this you know i uh, definitely it's uh I think mean, I've not seen a screen this busy since I looked at World of Warcraft and that amount of hotkeys that that screen used to come with. But there's so many stats to keep track of in, in the game and you're constantly trying to maximise the limited time you have in each area to try and make sure you come away with like the most treasure, the most research that you can obviously invest once you make it off each island. Mm-hmm. Normally, I was obviously finding, and I think this is probably more poor strategy on my own part, that I would amass all this gold and research, and then I would get to the final boss, and it would basically just like annihilate me, and I just wouldn't be able to get get uh, off the island, which is a little frustrating. Um, and this is often this is often like the second mission, so it can be a little disheartening as well. And I think if you've got the patience to stick with this game, to learn its rules, and 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 properly see what it has to offer then i think there's certainly something to be enjoyed there i think though at the same time for the more casual gamer then this is going to be a sort of overwhelming experience and that it's far too complex and with no option really to play like a simplified version of the game there's plenty of options to play harder versions but nothing more simple yeah but i think i i really do enjoy the fact that this game does start off and i remember it having that screen which said that you actually can you can play in two different modes i guess in a certain way where you can start as like kind of like it's for the more casual player like i have quotations in the in like air quotes right now casual gamer in the sense that you know it it'll help you it'll be a little easier on you Whereas, you know, there's a hardcore style where, you know, things will be more challenging. Nothing will, I guess it's less guided. I haven't really stepped into that one yet, so I don't really know what that entitles. But I do like the fact that they do give you that option. So if you were going to give this a rating, what uh, rating are we going to go with? I would say that for what it is, I'd give it a 3.5 stars. Um, mostly because there is a lot of charm to it, but... I don't think this sort of game is for everyone. Yes, I was uh, also around the same area. I'm going to give this a solid three stars. Um, this is the game that you were going to love or hate, and I feel that because it's obviously been released on the Steam platform, then that certainly gives it advantage of finding the right audience. And if this had been released for like the console market, I think it would have been... It wouldn't have found its found its audience. I think certainly with PC gamers and and certainly gamers who use Steam, then it's going to they tend to be a little more patient and more willing to put the time into learning a strategy game, and especially one as complex as this. It seems more their market than the more hyperactive crowd of both the PlayStation and Xbox market. Um, I think that that's one point that I'd like to make is that there are two more DLCs for this. Um, the More to Explore came out um, later, um, earlier, and recently in May they came out with the Emperor's Challenge, which lets you do your expedition in Asia. 
So, and it gives you, I think, a few more characters and, and whatnot. So it, it is a pretty developed game, and there's quite a bit of material for you to... So the replayability is definitely there. Um, I also am looking forward to go jumping back and kind of like trying to see how far I can get with this. So this wraps up this episode. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please like, share, and subscribe. We'd love to hear your feedback and any game recommendations that you have. Head over to our home base, thatmomentin.com, to read more gaming reviews, to get gaming news and releases every single day. Follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook, at Game Warp Podcast. You can also hang out with us on our Twitch channel, where we stream at Game Warp Podcast. And we recently just opened an Instagram to share all our gaming obsessions and what we are playing. And, you, and that's also under Game Warp Podcast. Till next time, bye! Thank you.